Aloha YouTube, this is your boy Crypto Roots. And we're gonna do a little crypto class today. So get out your notes, your pads. Um make sure you hit that like, make sure you hit that subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Hit me up for the crypto mentorships if you want to get personal one-on-one -on -one, uh crypto advice and walk you pretty much hand in hand all the way through to being a programmer. You know, hit me up. If you need a crypto miner set up on your computer, hit me up. I can do that. You know what I'm saying? 40 bucks, whatnot. Email me at crypto roots, protonmail.com. So, today, I want to talk about what is crypto mining? How the hell does this work? I still work in 9 to 5, and other people are out there using their computers to generate more money than what I'm doing at my nine to five job. Why aren't those people getting arrested? What's going on? How how is this possible? Okay, so uh, let's talk about it. Um, take out your notes. So we're going to talk about the Bitcoin network specifically, but the network consists of nodes and miners. Write that down. Nodes, N O D E S and miners okay so miners are the ones who are uh processing or mining the blocks and finding the blocks they're like the workers they're they're putting forth the energy the nodes are like the the centers they're the, they're security guards they they validate everything and they pretty much hold a lot of the data all right so the nodes are the ones that share the information with other nodes and they have to validate everything. Miners have to validate everything as well. But the miners send the work they done to the nodes. So the miners so the nodes are actually more of the more of the the bigger guys than the miners are. Even even though you don't get paid to be a node in the Bitcoin network originally. Maybe with the Litecoin uh, Lightning network, yeah. But with the original Bitcoin network, you don't get paid to be a node. So not only does that cost you, I don't even know, it's like 250 gigabytes of free space just to even download the Bitcoin blockchain. And it's getting more space as the blockchain goes on. But, um, and then the bandwidth. So not only do you got to have pretty much uh, a, a high quality in computer, you got to have a lot of space, you got to have a lot, a lot of bandwidth just to even be a node on the Bitcoin network and you don't get paid. Uh, so it's more of a voluntary kind of act, you know, and the more nodes there are and the uh, more miners there are, the more decentralized the network becomes. Okay. So now I may just go all over the place. You guys can put it together if you're taking down notes. There's a lot of information. Now, imagine a math problem we already know how fast computers and calculate how, how fast computers can solve a math problem imagine a math problem so difficult your computer is struggling to solve it like struggling like it's overheating your computer is trying to solve this math problem imagine a math problem so hard that you and a bunch of other computers around the world all together are struggling to solve this math problem. Okay, think about it that way. We all know how fast computers solve math problems. Think about a math problem so hard that even a group of computers are struggling to solve it. That's how difficult this math problem is. It's, it's pretty much unconceivable, but it, it, I'm trying to paint a picture where you can possibly conceive of the difficulty of this uh, the math problem of, so, of finding the block it's not really a math problem it's more of a guessing game but we're gonna call it a math problem now because it is a lot of quote-unquote math involved okay and that's called finding the block now why would anyone want to put that much energy quote unquote, and time trying to find a block well the reason why these miners are putting all that energy and time to finding a block is because you get a block reward okay you get a block reward that means you get a token or a prize or you get incentivized for 
being able to be in the first one pretty much around the world on the network to find that block okay now let's back up here um what is a block a block simply put it I'm I'm just putting it in simple terms is a group of transactions okay a block cons is a group of transactions I'll so see it as the container like a bag or a box yeah like so the block inside the block is a group of transactions so I send you 50 bucks that is a transaction that is that's one transaction that is included in the block so a block could have anywhere I don't know I'm just anywhere from no transactions so up maybe up to 80 or so every it all depends on the block size and I can't I forgot the exact block size of Bitcoin's block but um, it's like three megabytes or something I don't know but so it has a limited size of how much transaction so when I send you 50 bucks and you send your friend uh, 25 bucks that is a certain amount of bytes that takes up a certain amount of space so the block can hold a certain amount of space so it can hold a certain amount of transactions because each transaction is a certain amount of space okay in bytes or whatever so now a block can hold a group of transactions now once the transaction is included in a block that means it's official it's it's part of the blockchain it's part of history now and everyone and that's going to be broadcast around the networks by the nodes and every everybody on the network is, uh, eventually is going to have your my transaction to you and your transaction to your friend so once it's included in the block it's permanent it's immutable write that down immutable i m m u t a b l e it cannot be changed okay it cannot be changed so let me take a second it's a lot of information so uh, there's obviously gonna be part two and part three and whatnot now The miners are racing. It's a competition. It's based on game theory. So it's a competitive game that's incentivized. So miners are putting forth the energy. They're actually paying. They're actually staking energy. So that's a whole, there's another uh, algorithm called proof of stake. Write that down, POS. But Bitcoin runs off proof of work, POW. We're going to get into all that. Um, I may not make this too long, but just because uh, I, I want you guys to understand and not have to be like, yo, you know, so we're just going over some key concepts, rewind, rewind the video, start it over and rewind and just get this drilled down that it's a competition and miners are the computers that are using the processing power and energy to try to solve a math problem. The first person who solves the math problem with, within a certain amount of time, each blockchain has its own uh, block time limit essentially so Bitcoin is a around on average 10 minutes I think ethereum is like 60 seconds so like some blockchains Bitcoin is rather long uh, so you'll see blockchains going once a minute uh, once every five minutes it all depends so that's the time limit that it takes for people to find that next block someone's eventually gonna find it eventually um, and then it goes through the difficulty retargeting which means the math problem gets harder or it gets uh, gets less gets easier based on how often people are finding the blocks okay now when I send you money when I send you a transaction in Bitcoin a cryptocurrency not only does it take up a certain amount of space but it costs a small amount of fee it's like it's called the network fees or see it as a processing fee now the price of the processing fee, uh, fee it all varies on a lot of different uh, network dynamics but relatively it's it's cheap um, maybe uh, sometimes it just uh, it all depends I'm not gonna get into the numbers and whatnot but relatively it's cheap now that processing fee goes to the miner that's actually find that finds the block and includes your transaction so let's back up remember I said a block is a group of transactions say you got about 60 transactions 
each of each one of those 60 transactions has a, a processing fee. So the miner that actually finds the block collects all 60 processing fees. So it's like a, a, a bag of change, right? And so that incentivizes him even more to, to, to find the block because he's gonna get even more money. So not only does the miner get the block reward, but he gets all that group of processing fees that goes in that block. So he's extra incentive, it's like a tip on top of it. So, so that's how, that's why miners are actually spending the, uh, the energy. Uh, it's because of the, the reward. It's and you know, and if the market goes up, then yo, the, you know, that's even more reward. So there's a lot of factors of why people would actually choose to mine. Okay. Now, can an average person mine cryptocurrency? You're going to hear a lot of people in the crypto game say, no, you can't. No, it's not worth it. No, you can't make anything. And and in in most cases, they are right. But I'm relentless and I've sacrificed my laptops, my time and energy to find cryptocurrencies you can mine on an average computer, okay? That I currently do mine on an average computer. I travel, so I only have my, I don't have a, a big mining rig or whatnot, but I have three or four, uh, three different laptops and a couple cell phones that I use, to, I use to mine cryptocurrency. So if I can do it, you can do it. So I figured out coins and strategies on how to make a decent profit off CPU mining. That's where you got to hit me up for the crypto miner or that's where you got to hit me up for the mentorship and I walk you through the whole process cuz the real money is in the education. You're not going to make a whole lot of money just mining off your laptop unless you know how to trade and you're a consistent trader. That's when you start seeing the actual real uh profit coming and you're like, "Whoa, all I can do is just yo, mine crypto and trade it." And flip it and flip it and flip it yes you can nobody nothing's stopping you don't have to sign up you don't have to get interviewed you know what I'm saying that's all free will you can do this at any given time you can mine cryptocurrency and trade it at any time there's no clock in there's no clock out I mean so it's true freedom okay to do to to make as much or as little it's up to you but I only can show you how things work I would never tell you what or what not to do I can only show you how things work and what I've done myself, okay? Strategies I learned for myself. Um, I just learned a new strategy that has nothing really to do with crypto mining, but I want to mention it, um, is earning interest off your attention. I'm going to say that again. You can earn interest off your attention. Let me say it one more time. You can earn a passive income off your attention. I wouldn't be lying to you. I'm not here to spread lies. You know, I'm not brother polite. I don't spread lies. I keep it real. Okay. So let's go back to the crypto mining. I think it's I think it's crucial. I think at every point in the history, every household is going to have a crypto miner. Uh, it's just it's just the quickest way for self sustainability. And you know, and if you decide to do it like a full time gig, it's like the new growing weed. Like literally, it's the new growing weed. Like. You should see it's like the spaces where people used to grow wheat, they mine cryptocurrency now. Like, uh, it, it's the same kind of energy. It's, it, it's, it's, the, it's the same kind of game, but now you're dealing with computers instead of plants, you know? And you're doing it decentralized and you're getting paid decentralized. So it's a lot safer, to be honest. Um, so let's go back to mining. What did it, what's a few things I want to mention? Math problems, people racing to solve a math problem. Um, because they're they're heavily incentivized transactions a block ho holds a group of transactions and um, the miners are the ones who include the transactions in the block because they get the block reward uh, they have to mine it they usually gonna find a block within a certain amount of uh, a time limit every blockchain has its own time limit these are all things you you really need to know and be aware of of how this whole system works okay now Let's back up. Let me see. What, do, what else do I want to go? This for this is uh, for very very beginners. Now, mining pools. Let's talk about mining pools. So mining pools. You can be a solo solo miner. It means you mine and find the blocks all by yourself, or you can join a pool, which means you can share resources with uh, other people on trying to solve a uh, find a block. Now, if you choose to join a mining pool 
you have to sh and if you do and your mining pool does find a block they you they share it with everybody okay so you're not gonna get as much as if you were to do it on your own but if you did it on your own it would be a lot harder so you have to have really good equipment to try to find and mine blocks on your own if you don't have good equipment if you have a CPU or laptop you're going going to have to join a mining pool you're going to have to sh join other miners with different computers and you guys all share your resources and what's going to happen is they're going to kick you down more than likely the people with more energy and computation power are going to find the blocks but since you joined and help they're going to give you a little uh, a little bread anyways they're going to kick you with a little uh, crypto bread anyways that's how it works so um mining pools are crucial and each mining pool has its own rules has its own fees um but that's the game is just learning how to uh learning how to uh, join your and then your computer is your worker and your wallet is your payout address all within your laptop so you literally have your worker you can even name it you can i've named my crypto worker my miner crypto roots so crypto roots goes to work and then once the mining pool the mining pool processes the work i've done then they pay me out to my crypto wallet on my same computer so this is the world we live in this is the world we live in and it's crucial and that's why i try to take the time to teach this to people is that we all need to be a part of this and we can all generate our own form of value and share it with each other and eventually the market will rise so you you want to mine coins that are really cheap and mineable and the potential you know as long as they have good fundamentals the potential could because that's how bitcoin started bitcoin was able to be mined on your laptop you know and then just so happened the market it's we're probably never gonna see uh, gonna see it as big as Bitcoin, but you know a good 10x rise on a coin that you mined on your CPU is not bad, man. It's not bad at all. I got my mineral water. Um. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna end it there. Rewind it back. Rewind it back. This is just a brief intro. I don't want to overload you. It could be a whole course I could do off the top of the dome. But um, I really wanted to do the live chat, but I'm all the way in this in all the way somewhere in Mexico and I'm lucky to even have internet. So uh, sometimes it's good. Eventually I'll be in a, I'll be in a new spot where uh, I can have consistent internet and do some more mentorships, live mentorships and whatnot. But uh, leave the comments, email me, hit me up. If you want me to set up your crypto miner, 40 bucks uh, for the setup, 25 for the uh, the explanation of how it all works. Um, and then you can start building from there. You can start teaching other people and you can start trading. And it's, it's a fun game. And every day I'm looking for new ways to generate passive income. And I just found out my newest one was uh, earning interest off your attention. So that's going to be a nice long-term passive income uh, crypto uh, hustle, you know. But uh, aloha, much love. Take it easy. Peace.